In my opinion, David Mamet changed everything. David found the music in the way America talks. He finds the music. He finds the music in the profound, in the profane, in the complex, and in the mundane. Any actor who sits down to memorize a Mamet script sooner or later considers suicide. <laughs> memorizing a Mamet script, memorizing Shakespeare is a cakewalk compared to memorizing a Mamet script. But when you do, my friends, when you get those speeches down, it's like driving a Porsche. When two actors meet who have done American Buffalo or Speed the Plow or State and Maine, they'll often start running the lines with each other because they literally feel good to say. Mammoth speeches are like singing your favorite melody. Combined with this awesome power to write speeches that make you wish you could be that character is a bravery that is unparalleled in our business. The stories that David Mamet tells are true and honest, and he has paid a price for that honesty, despite the fact that David is arguably our greatest dramatist. Critics have been hard on him, and I think it's because David has always been two steps ahead of us. Works like Sexual Perversity in Chicago, Oleana, Edmund, Wag the Dog, have left us saying, you can't say that. But time has always been on David's side because ultimately we find that you can say that and you must say that because it's the truth. David's plays and movies are inhabited by lowlifes and thieves and con men and innocents, but all of them have a point of view. And what we ultimately see is David Mamet's love of humanity. It is this magnificent combination of art and honesty and humanity that make David Mamet an American treasure. I'm proud to present the Writers Guild Screen Laurel Award to Buffalo Dave Mamet. Thank you so much. Um, the, the ancient, ineluctable human urge to create drama, I mean, I'm just kidding. Uh, actually, it's, uh, it's great to be here. It's an, it's, it's, as, as we know, it's an extraordinarily uh, tough business. Um, and only those of us who've been bitten by the snake can tell each other how it feels. Uh, it occurred to me that there are films about um, good Nazis, but there are, there are no films about good producers. Uh, ev every producer in every movie is bad. And then I thought, well, of course, that makes sense because all the films about bad producers were written by writers. And um, <laughs> then it occurred to me all the films about good Nazis were written by Jews. So uh, it tells you the true, the true nature of bearing a grudge. Uh, Tolst Leo Tolstoy uh, said that there's no tragedy in life equal to that of the marriage bed, but that's because he's never been to uh, the networks to have a tone meeting. Uh, it, it's, it's, as we know, it's, it's really rough to be both an artist and an employee. We might as well say the word. It's just tough. The, the, the dual demands um, are... Um, are, are terrible, and they uh, exact a great toll from someone who, who does want to support his or her family and does want to be an artist, because you've got to do both things. And they drive some of us bats, and they drive all of us bats uh, uh, a lot of the time. And so uh, this award to me means that my um, colleagues who, uh, who participate in that fight and my allies in that fight have uh, chosen, as I understand it, to um, 
accuse me of a certain amount of integrity, uh, for, for, for which I'm, I'm very deeply honored. But when the Writers Guild um, said that I was to achieve the award, I, my first reaction, of course, was that they've got the wrong guy. And that wasn't from a, a false sense of humility, but, but because I'd been involved in a, in a credit arbitration. <laughs> and thank you all very, very much. It means a great deal to me. Thank you.